of mine. There's also spotted owls, another endangered species that lives in this valley, and they would also be subjected to that. Should we seed our clouds with silver iodide, the substance, even if it didn't dissolve in the water, would then land on leaves and, and, and plant vegetation that animals would eat. And as soon as they would eat that, it would instantly dissolve in the acidic environment in their stomach. So that all these animals, whether they drank the, the water that was now polluted or not, would be taking in these poisons nonetheless. Um, there were studies done by the National Park Service, um, the U.S. Biological Service, and the World Health Organization. And all three studies came out and said that not only does it not work, but where, in areas where we have cloud seeded, we found these toxins in the animals that live there. The Santa Ana Quality Control Board um, that controls the water from Big Bear Lake all the way to the Pacific Ocean. And they came out in, in agreement and said that all of these accusations, all of these statements about what could happen are truth. And they declared that if our, our valley went ahead with this plan of seeding the clouds, that the Santa Ana Quality Control Board would pull all of their funding, which amounted somewhere between you know two and four million dollars per year. Uh, with that being the case, thank goodness, um, our valley decided that we would abandon the plan for cloud seeding and, and trying to increase rainfall with silver iodide. When Journey to the Heart put on a conference called The Gathering uh, down at Jenks Lake near Big Bear, that day, which was September 9th, it was pouring and it had not rained here in months. I later checked the um, newspaper and there was absolutely no weather predicted, but on the drive down I thought somebody's doing something. Somebody down there knows what's going on because The Gathering is a, uh, a conference of indigenous healers and wisdom keepers from all over the world. It occurred to me to ask who here knows most about calling the rain, and I was directed to Blue Thunder. My name is uh, Blue Thunder with the Eastern Shoshones. Wind River Indian Reservation in Wyoming, working to help uh, bring the visions and the dreams to all nations and all cultures. The reason that I came here was because I was invited by the Journey to the Heart uh, organization that invited 30 indigenous healers from around the world to come speak about how the earth works. So they heard of this ceremony that it did right here. Called the 19 plus 1 equals 20. We call it the Magnificent. Here's those 19 sacred sites. There's 19 of these points in the sacred sites, the mountains and the energy places where the energy crisscrosses and goes through is called a medicine well. That circle is 1,200 miles this way, 1,200 miles that way. The earth was made of this electrical magnetic energy and these grid lines, so those energy lines get gnarled and knotted and stuck, or they disappear altogether. And then those are dead zones. So if there's a dead zone on the body, it'll turn to decay, and it'll be rotten flesh and green. So on the earth, the same thing happens. Electrical magnetic energy is disconnected because of the mining, the railroads, any development, housing developments, that dig holes in the earth. Those holes leak light. Everything is affected by thoughts and actions on the earth. The earth holds harmonic sound. Vehicles, bulldozers, and other types of machinery go out there and break the rock. That sound goes into the rocks. Now everything does not vibrate in harmony. In 2002, the scientists were now saying in Yellowstone, underneath Yellowstone Lake, there was a caldera that had risen tens stories tall. What had happened because of the bad vibration and sound, on the opposite side of the world is the Caspian Sea. Around the Caspian Sea is Iran and Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, bombing, shaking the earth. So that vibration goes all the way through the earth, touches Yellowstone, and vibrates. So the cracks of the earth vibrating and close. Now the caldera is rising, getting ready to explode because of bad sound and bad vibration. In our tribal nations, we have a story that's called the butterfly effect. If a butterfly flips its wings on one side of the earth, it will be felt on the opposite side. That's how sensitive Mother Earth is to sound. And the scientists were saying that if the Yellowstone blew, it would be 200 times the size of what Mount St. Helens was. They mentioned that the cloud of dust would have went around the earth and blocked out the sun for two years. The dreams and the visions came to me and told me to get out of college. And he said, that your real degree is in the rock art, in the canyons, and the valleys. And you're to go there and get the real wisdom and the knowledge. So I went into the petrocliffs and the rock art canyons. And in these areas, the rock art began to teach me about the circle ceremonies called medicine hole ceremonies, which were the same writings that were in Grand Teton 
area of Wyoming and other areas. What I've learned to bring the water back through the ceremony that was written in a rock or this one right here. This ceremony has been written in the rocks for 6,000 years. This is the earth. Oh, these are the four mountain peaks in the Grand Tetons. The earth stands in balance with the grid lines, the energy lines of Mother Earth. These energy lines are what hold us together. And the message from Mother Earth came and she said, Tell the people of the earth, my children, come together in peace and harmony and sit on the sacred sites and sing their songs together and praise the creation of Mother Earth and thank her and thank the Great Spirit God. And when you do this, and the people will come, the volcano will go to sleep and will not explode. And so I traveled for many months from November 2003 until May 8th of 2004, asking the tribal nations to help the white people, the black people, and the yellow people. And when I went to these mountains, I had to recharge them with crystals, sacred stones. In the Grand Tetons, we had 300 people arrive here. And in these other places, there was anywhere from 250 to 25 people. And the message was, if only one person went here, that would be all that would be needed for the volcano to sleep. And it happened. So on May 8th, we were to vibrate the earth for 24 hours with songs. So when we did this for 24 hours, the volcano went to sleep. And those cracks opened up, and then the geysers began to go again. And then the pressure was alleviated in Yellowstone. The rain and the snow and some of the springs have opened in this big circle. On June 3rd, 2004, the scientists in Yellowstone National Park were having a meeting about what happened to the volcano, and they were going to show all their seismic graphs. When I got there, they were now called the tribal nations together, and were wanting them to do more vibration and sound in Yellowstone National Park as we had alleviated the problem. We can repair the earth and reconnect these electrical magnetic energies through the sound of vibration. Drumming here in the middle, send out these waves like this. Every time I hit the drum, it's electrical energy. My thoughts is electrical energy. And when I hit that drum and I put my thoughts in, my thoughts go out and it fixes things because it's prayer. And so if we can fix this volcano, what else can we fix with thoughts and prayers and sound and vibration? So we did this with sound and vibration and love and thought forms. The earth holds such powerful sound that she is alive and she's real. She's conscious. She's a living organism. Right after this, Blue Thunder, uh, came up and, and decided to help us do a, a healing um, of the mountains here. That through the years of mining and road building and construction, that we've actually disrupted the, the ley lines of the land. When Blue Thunder came, um, he came with an open heart and he came with a willingness to share and to empower that we really all can take a role. Blue Thunder was such a gift to our community. Um, because he brought this wisdom that came from his ancestors and from what he had learned in life that was really his passion. And he brought not only the wisdom, but he brought his deep love and his deep heart um, for nature um, and for understanding and working with the earth. So on October 26th, we did a training with about 25 people by the lake in Big Bear um, where Blue Thunder explained to us about the vibration and the energy grid and, and how all of this worked. The laws are not structured to protect the environment. The laws are structured to make money. The laws are structured to cut the trees down. The laws are structured to pipe the water. And it's up to us to change these things and the new laws and regulations to understand what's happening with the earth. We have to be one with the planet. This is what the Native Americans understood. So the trees talked to us because they had a vibrating message. It was the rocks, the grass, so on and so forth. And Mother Earth has a spirit, so she communicates to us also. We are part of everything. Powerful energy was upon the surface of the planet. Right now, that energy has been dimmed. And Mother Earth can change all things and put it back into working effect immediately. But what will happen was catastrophes will have to take place and the humans will be hurt. The rocks hold the crystalline matrix together, which is called the ley lines. So if you pick up any rock out there and move it back and forth in the sunlight, you see like little diamond sparkles in there. That's the energy that holds things together. And when highways come in and cut the surface of the planet, it disconnects those energy lines. So what we're going to do now is put these lines back together. So the Earth has been imaged with bad vibration. It's the heartbeat of Mother Earth. This sound is this. This is the heartbeat of the universe. Scientists have found that there's a thudding sound in the universe. Going, doom, 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 doom. 
That sound connects to this drum, connects to the heart, connects to the universal presence. We connect the energies back to the surface of the planet. We, we fix her, the energy lines that come back together. So this is why we smudge. This is why we use the drum. In the medicine well ceremonies, we go to those mountain peaks and we energize them with sacred stones, crystals, and those things pull high light, high energy, and reconnect the energy back to the sacred peaks or to the areas that were developed and disconnected. And these ceremonies that we're doing will vibrate the earth and will repair the cells of the earth. The sound pulls the ley lines together. With the vibration of the drum and the vibration of our tools and our voices and speaking in peace, we'll image the earth again with sacred purity again, and then the ley lines come back together. But the snow will come back in and the rain will come back in. The forecasts, you know, for for the winter were not supposed to be a, a winter of, of much rainfall at all. But as soon as we started training for our, our ceremony, our sacred ceremony, medicine wheel ceremony, um, we had a snowfall of two feet. And this was in October. People that were looking out the window were actually seeing the spirals coming in and anchoring into the lake. What was forecasted was a, a very large snowstorm way, way, way up north, an Alaskan storm. And that one they couldn't track anymore, they lost it, and I believe we got it because we got two feet of snow and the ski slopes opened a month early in October. Normally they're very happy if they open on Thanksgiving weekend. Blue Thunder set up this amazing medicine wheel ceremony. So between then October 26th and November 15th, Blue Thunder was traveling around to these eight other sites on the spoke and organizing people and training them at those areas. <laughs> November 15th was the day that we did the giant medicine wheel ceremony where everyone was at the nine sites simultaneously from sunup most of the day. And we had, amazingly, for a town this size, for, for this little community, we had about 65 people at our hub site here in Big Bear out on the lake. Then after the medicine wheel ceremony, we wanted to have a celebration so that we could get everybody from all the sites together and we could share our information and our experiences. And we set up a dinner and a wonderful celebration on the 20th. Many of us were kind of praying that there would not be heavy snow until we had our celebration so people could get up here to the mountain from the other areas. And uh, that worked. We were good at that. <laughs> so. But on the 20th, where we had um, this wonderful gathering of people, and we had Aztec dancers from Los Angeles, a family of 11 that were just wonderful, and we had people from all over from different cultures. It was, it was amazing. It was just a marvelous ceremony, and, and it was probably about 9 p.m. that night that uh, Jola looked outside and said, it's snowing, and it's snowing hard. When that snowfall stopped, we again had a two-foot snowfall. And the children from the Aztec dancers were outside screaming because they had never seen snow. It snowed so heavily that within an hour or so we pretty much had to tell everybody you're not going anywhere. Where we did really ask that we not have snow so they could come up, we forgot to ask that it be delayed until they got down the mountain. As the winter progressed, it turned out to be the second wettest winter in history in Bear Valley. And this all happened after uh, all the predictions were that we were in the, the most severe drought with no end in sight. Then we have had precipitation throughout the winter, very heavy precipitation, such that the lake, which had been 17 and a half or 18 feet down before we started all of this work, by April or so was full, absolutely full. It got within one inch of the top. That's the unique thing now. If you look at that lake right now, it's, it's full because we haven't had what you might call, you know, any big torrential rains or anything like that. So well, it just filled up because of what happened two weeks ago. After last year and the ceremonies with, uh, with Benny LeBeau, um, the water came back and I noticed also the ants came back. Uh, some were different breeds of ants. However, they're back in the trees again. They're coming back and that's, that's a hopeful thing. You know, ants can be considered a pest, but actually, you know, they are important. Fred was mentioning to me when he was a kid, he used to go down into Holcomb Creek and fish. We kind of joke about that because for the last probably 10 or 15 years, I don't think 
I've seen. I haven't seen a fish down yeah. in there, but I know people fish. Well, we, know, we were lucky to see, see water. water. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and this year the beaver are back down in there. The beaver ponds are are full, and uh, we actually saw some trout down there. And that was the first of November, which is really rare. Whatever we do encounter wildlife right now, it's a, kind of a real blessing.